So my one, it's maybe slightly old news, but I did want to bring it back because I think this is a pretty good conversation point. So my bad point is I think that getting rid of the RMRs was a bad thing. I'm personally okay. anti this uh, new system where it's like an extra four days and an extra Swiss stage and no RMR. And now there's a few like kind of like home reasons in the sense of like, I used to love the fairy tale runs that we see. I know people would, the counter argument would always be kind of like, oh, it would make the major like lesser. They'd be like worse teams. I what, down or whatever. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. A bit of a good example where we kind of, I think it's like four of the top eight teams, like tier two teams, yes. quote unquote. Um, but I used to love that because, you know, I just think like it was, a, it was literally a life changing for a lot of these players. And the euphoria of when teams would qualify was insane. I mean, I was there when uh, Into the Breach qualified first, in, you know, UK majority major team i was sitting with them when they got the legend stage as well we were like in the green room waiting and they watched b and e beat phase so they that means they got the legend stage with like the most insane thing that was like ridiculous these are kind of guys i grew up with as well so that euphoria a bit personal in that sense and obviously biased there but i still love that having done quite a few rmrs as well i could see sort of what it meant to a lot of the players when they would qualify especially for the first time or oh, like sure. a good example was like when saw made their first major yeah, yeah. because the no scope onto uh jane that legged him and that lost them the previous oh, yeah year. where they like almost qualified once and then they had the similar thing exactly. happen the next time right when they just like, made New it through Box inferno it's the dodo right. leg game and yes. they don't make it because they lost an ot that kind of thing right so when they right. made it the set you know a year later or whatever those sort of you know, like, you know euphoria these are players who've been around for like eight years or whatever and never been even close to a major now they've finally made it so i always love the rmrs for that but i think as well it comes out to other things for me so like i think the first one was like it was one of the only kind of true open circuits that we had like in cs especially you know when we've had this era of the partner leagues and i know they're sort of the partner leagues are going in quotation marks in towards next year but it still seems that like next year the majority of tournaments are not actually going to an open circuit regardless they're just inviting our valve ranking so it's yes. sort of still bottlenecks towards this top level and there's no real ability for kind of teams that are sort of out of the woodwork or tier two teams would never be in consideration to really even make it. another good one from last year i'm cal no one had really heard of them you know if you hadn't worked tier two we sort of knew of them but even in tier two they weren't like insane they were pretty good but i didn't think they were going to be a major level team so you know yeah teams like i'm cal but I think as well, without the RMR, this is a lot of like financial uncertainty for organizations. And I think it's probably, actually probably at an all time high. And we've seen a lot of actually pretty good orgs who have been really good, either proving ground to players or kind of the, this, this talent coming through or actually closing. It is a good example. Ultimate Tact closed like last week. They've been in Germany for like 10 plus years, every single year playing like the ESR Meisterschaft. They've even gone to Cologne, etc. cetera. Um, Sprout's another good example. So a lot of organizations close the doors and they all put it down to basically saying without an rmr we actually don't know where we're going to get to secure money or like for sponsors it's really hard to say that we have this sort of potential so i think that's one of the big things and you know i think it originally was seen as a good idea because the rmr's had their problems with like um the, the the formatting but that's not changed heading in towards the new system of like 32 team extra switch stage we still got best of ones that was the ultimate issue for me with the rmr was like i never think best of ones should be at any way in and around a major in any sort of format, but we still got that heading in towards that Swiss stage. So I feel like the real issue wasn't the RMRs themselves. And I know they kind of accredited to the busy schedule, but it's still relatively busy regardless. I mean, the RMRs were a little bit longer, sure, but I don't know. For me, I, I really feel like the RMRs is where we got so a lot of really good storylines and fairy tale moments. It was make or break for a lot of the players. A lot of the best players we got now. I mean, like half the Navi roster oh, came sure. through one fairy tale run at Paris. So for me, that's where I look at this and I say like I. I'm going to miss all the storylines behind it. I think now it's just going to seem like, not obviously it's the major and it's the biggest event of the year, etc. one of the biggest events of the year, but it's still going to not feel like this moment of, oh my God, how is this team qualified kind of thing. It's just going to be, while well, they're coming in off the rankings, we already knew who was going to be there. And, you know, even people like Messio uh, from, from, uh, uh, complexity who like he's like an insane whiz of like all the numbers and the, the valve points and he knows like you know a month and a half in in advance right like this is you know who's gonna make it and as long as they don't lose this certain best of three we've made it this that and the other so i'm gonna miss that i feel like you know the real kind of narratives around it it's kind of what made counter-strike good for me in 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 the kind of the tier two coming up these are all these storylines so yeah i'm gonna miss it and i think you know they haven't fixed the fundamental issue which is still just best of ones so in the HLTV article that talks about the death of RMRs, which was published a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I was making sure about this because I wasn't certain when you brought this topic up, the 
it doesn't say that necessarily everything is going to be via Valve ranking alone. And so there may be some sort of hybrid aspect to this. And so I'm going to just be a little bit optimistic here because I actually think that the RMR system was pretty fun. I, I'd say that it was really fun. But I also don't think that uh, the way I saw it is that you should be in the next major guaranteed if you keep your core lineup together and you're in the top four of the previous major. Like I, I, I didn't want to really give passes to teams that actually simply made it to the playoffs, but teams that actually won a game in the arena component in a BO3, I don't see why those top four teams should not be invited to every single major forever like i mean i mean obviously don't keep giving them the pass i'm not saying get grandfathered and i'm saying the most previous major yes but now they it looks like it looks like it's going to be mostly due to the valve rankings but i think it would be really cool personally if they decided okay actually the top x teams of each region based off of who finishes in the legend stage or whatever, the championship stage, all of that kind of stuff. If those teams are creating slots based off of the valve rankings, which then are implemented, but then we have something kind of like back in the day where it was the major close qualifier, where they played it on LAN near the, in the kind of the same area as the actual major that was to come very shortly after that. I actually think that if there was a component like that, like say, Say there were actually, this would be a hugely logistical nightmare, by the way. This would be so difficult to handle. But it would be 24 teams essentially make it through immediately to the major. And then the final eight spots were battled out through, say, the 16 teams that were ranked the highest in the Valve ranking behind them. In fact, including uh, more spots for, like, Asia, the Americas, etc., and I, if there was some sort of component like that, I think that would be best because I do feel like at the end of the day, I do like the fact that there is an open circuit here. I do like I, I just think that the storylines that it creates are sometimes the most engaging, endearing and sometimes life changing, as you already referenced in what happened at Paris for a few of those teams there. But I also think that I want the best teams there. I just want the best teams there. And for my money, the teams that are probably in the top 24 Valve ranking all should be there every single time. I don't want them to get bounced in the RMRs. Like, that was the worst part of the RMRs. I like seeing the teams that are, say, ranked 50th in the world have a cool run to get into the, like, deep into the tournament. But if it was at the expense of a team that was top top four in the world, top five in the world, like when Cloud9 didn't even make it to Paris, for example. Like, that's not, that wasn't cool. Like, that team, I wanted that team to play there, even though I obviously had it out for Naphany, and look how that turned out, by the way. I don't, I don't necessarily want him to not even be at the major, you know? So, uh, I, 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 I don't, I, I hope that there's some kind of compromise here. That's basically what I'm getting at. I, I, I'm actually glad that the RMRs are gone, and that there's going to be more invites to the major, but I wish there was some still very arduous but possible route for an open qualification via winning consecutive series through the the open format that we've uh come to come to like or at least some of us have being as you did frame this as a bad point that's why i knew this would be an interesting topic because i don't actually agree like i can agree on this sense right which is here's how i would frame it is if the major is supposed to be for everyone like casual fans and hardcore fans i would prefer something like what maui's saying like i'll give you a compromise like to me the the problem we've had at the moment is we've done one or the other so we used to have like an extreme version of what Maui used to say we used to have it where if you just made top eight of the major guaranteed you're in the next major no matter what no matter the context of who wants so famously that's actually why famously Fallen's team at the time it was Kaboom and then Keith Stars etc they only qualified to that first major but because they kept making top 8 even before they had like Cold Zero etc they used to automatically be in the next one so they never had to go through another qualifier so that's actually how they got their start so I think that version the problem is though is you can get results like that like if people don't know because back then the majors used to have BO1s if you took won the two BO1s the team I just referred to that Brazilian team famously at the time couldn't beat any ranked team in a best of three but because they kept going and winning BO1s you kept getting them in the next major so I always thought that's like on the one hand you found talent but you actually haven't thought a sturdy system like they're making the next major without even ever winning a series against someone they're just winning like BO1s with sometimes randomised maps etc so I do think that was negative but I acknowledge that the people out there do want like 
the notion of novelty, like new players and new teams and a team last... Basically, what people want the movie. The movie is, like, I actually think the sport that's encapsulated is the best is actually poker. When poker got huge, it wasn't because people like to watch professional poker. What they what made poker huge was the World Series of Poker because the premise is any fucking noob, any of us in this call can go on. As long as you have $10,000, you can enter the main event. And this actually happened in 2003. You might, in theory, cause us a lot of luck in tournament poker. You could actually fuck around and win it. Like, there's a guy back then, it almost seemed fake because even his actual surname was fucking Moneymaker. Literally, he was called Chris, Chris. Moneymaker. He Chris, was a random yeah. nobody guy who got in from like a satellite tournament or something, and he really did win the World Series. By the way, he wasn't even close to one of the best players when you saw him. Like, I, I actually followed poker back then. But the point is, I do think people want, with all these underdog runs, Game of Legion's the best example because they almost bloody won the major. They want to believe that if a team really wasn't actually in the top tier of CS, but for reasons like partnership reasons or they can't get over the hump in an online qualifier, they want it to be that like if they really were like secret Secretly cracked, like this team maybe was. We'll never get to know, sadly, because they broke up immediately afterwards. Maybe they could go to the major in this last chance qualifier, as it were, which is what the RMR basically was. And if they're good enough, they can just make it all the way to the final win. And like essentially, no one's being gate kept out of the top end of the scene in that analogy. Like whoever's good enough just gets there. Right. The one flaw I have with that goes like this, which is I think they're both too extreme. The old one, you're making too many teams come through, like sort of the Hawks, it's top eight. And then the RMR one, you made like even like the joke then, luckily it never ever happened was you had basically the, apparently the only major winner that didn't qualify for the next one was the outsiders one aside from that every major winner always qualifies what people haven't realized is we're just really lucky that there wasn't ever a random day this could have happened where like the best team of the world just lost the rmr and didn't even make the major because if that had happened it kills so much of the major it even kills by the way the validity of whoever else wins the major because you know the best team wasn't there for that one day so in my opinion i actually think look i'm only the latest if i if it was only thorin's counter strike at like flashpoint i would make it so that zero upper qualification. I would basically have it. That was going to be my initial point. The reason why I'm against it is because I think if you're actually good enough, then there should be other ways to make it into the same circuit, which are the IEM events and the Blast events, which then, once you then prove yourself in the ranking, will get you into the major. Like, the system actually, the new system will already cover that. Now, look, if, as you referenced Messi also, there are a lot of issues. I saw they even finally addressed this on Itchel TV Confirmed. There are a lot of issues with the new Valve system and the fact that, it, unfortunately, it might actually end up just being the same, like, 30 teams attending all the same lands, yeah. just cycling in and out, all winning prize money and points, and then there'll be a load of really good teams who, in the past did sometimes break through and won't be able to get in. Like, in the future, the example I would give is, in the future... I don't think you'll be able to be a team like the Mongols and come from nothing because how would you even break in to get to the point where you're at the Colognes of the world, etc.? Like, I think you'll be in a tough spot. So I would go in the middle, basically. My compromise I would offer is this. I actually think the game that did this the best, it's just you have to understand in Dota, they complain about everything no matter what. So you'll never know as an outsider if things are good. <laughs> Dota had the best system for the international, which is what they used to do was they had a circuit a la the Valve ranking. So let's say, like, I, I'm not, I think in this last one, it was only six teams got invited, but it used to be just basically, like, I think it was like top 10 or top 12 or something those teams got invited well if you think about it, that solves one of my problems I've mentioned which is you don't want like an actual elite team failing the RMR right you, like as in it's even bad for the team that beats them because like I say it makes the major itself less prestigious if the top teams aren't there so when you do this system that they had then you, let's say in their system you do 8 or 10 teams then what you did is you did have qualifiers like an RMR regionally for the other teams to come in and then you could come through that I would go even more harsh I would personally it, like if we're going to imagine a major has old system 24 teams I would just, for real, do the Valve system, tweak the ranking so it's good, as in, even if I disagree, it's like, you know, you have number one, number three. It can never be number one's number 11 or something, because then there's a fuck system. But as long as it's vaguely close, we can all agree, you know, this is the range is how good the teams are. If you do that system and it's sturdy, then bring whatever you want, top 16, top 20 if you want. And then, but I'd just have, just have like four slots. Have, a, have an RMR system, but just for pure outsiders in this sense. Because that way, by the way, it's also, this also fixes another economic problem, which is that is another way that the smaller team can still like get relevance they can get buyouts for their players they can get funding from the sticker money they can actually themselves like show they're good if they can't make it to a cologne invite etc so I don't mind give a few slots my problem before was everyone had to come through an open qualifier I think that's fucking crazy as it is or we just let like every playoff team from a past major where as Maui says they might not have even done anything yet I agree with his top four one because that one's like they've at least won a fucking match in an arena at a major but you also can accomplish the same thing like I say by just inviting from the Vankings 
So I would, I would personally say, like everything in, in esports and politics, it's always like the correction's always an overcorrection in the other bloody direction. I would go somewhere in the middle. I'd have like some slots invited so we guarantee viewership, by the way. And then I'd also have some teams can make it last minute if they really show off the form. Just don't make it the entire field. Because the last thing I'll say is this, which is I actually think at the moment... Even though I said I'm an elitist, I actually think at the moment, the actual reality of the industry plays to my side, which is, sorry, because that site exists, guys, ES Charts. I, I've, I made this point a million times to Maui, but we've proven you're all wrong. Like, mathematically, you're all liars. Because you know what everyone goes? No, stop hating on underdogs. I love when underdogs... No, you don't. The, the literal numbers prove you don't tune into the later games when the underdog wins. I've got it right now. I pulled up the notorious Blast Paris Major. Here are the, here are the ones that just give away that you don't watch on underdogs play because you don't know them they're not famous and you don't have that connection to them and they don't have a massive fan base right if you remember in the last game of the Swiss system there was that amazing game between FaZe and Na'Vi everyone remembers it it was that Anubis game that went like a million rounds that was the second highest viewed game in the whole tournament that was in the fucking Swiss system because it's FaZe and Na'Vi everyone knows FaZe and Na'Vi meanwhile by the way that means that match guys was ahead in viewership of Vitality Apex semi-final Heroic Game Allegiance semi-final if you don't know Oh, by the way, Heroic Game League was even like one of the best series in the fucking tournament. But the point is, the second a casual fan who's the one telling me he wants the upset goes, Oh, what's the next match? Heroic Game League. He just goes, I'll tune in the final and see if it's a rock fight. He doesn't fucking watch that game. I'm sorry he doesn't. Meanwhile, even though, look, this isn't what I want, I don't want it to be WWE. If I make a match tomorrow that is like fucking Navi against Furia, it doesn't even matter if Fury is good. That game automatically probably can get like fucking, you know, like record breaking yeah. numbers or like the crazy view. Viewership. So I'll just say, you also at the moment cynically want all the top teams to make it. Like, look, I'm still allowing a factor where some of them could fail if they're not high enough in the rankings. But in a way, you actually want every big top team to make it if possible. Because that's currently, we're just an eyeballs industry right now. We haven't got the pay per view down. We haven't got all those other, we haven't got regional aspects down. So I, th I think you've got some good points there. But I also do think there's other ways we can do it, there's other ways we can fix the scene. Yeah, I agree. I just uh, even in touch on that as well with yeah, the Warcraft Major. I know people who for the uh, the Vitality Apex game who just like didn't even come into the arena. They were like in haven't at the oh, bar sure. and drinks because they were like I you know I don't give a fuck about Apex. Sure. Or, like I like or like another good one is like um, people who are like saying like the game leader like, game leader Monty I think it yep. was like game leader just spanked Monty. They were like ah oh, you know it's can I I don't really know these guys. So no I exactly. Get a drink. So I, I do agree. I, I wish there just was like some sort of blend because like. I think even like B and E when they made their runs, like that was like such a like a cool thing, and it became like even for the the more casual fans, they like knew about B and E. Oh sure, and yeah, yeah, kind of thing. So if there was a blend of where we get something. I mean, I think just even touching on Maui's point, that like it's a logistical nightmare having like all these different teams and regions, but maybe even if you had like the last eight spots were divided in some way, then between like a few to EU, a few to Asia, okay. a few to Americas, whatever, and somehow divided it so you got at least some open qualifier teams and then it's like a blend of both. That would be like the dream, but I think the, the big thing about having all the main teams there is a huge thing. I mean, I was the one cast in that C9 game and like Shiro was crying and stuff and it was like, I mean, even I remember like, Cast and be like, oh shit, that's actually a big team they've lost for the major. Like that's right. kind of that's kind of obvious. Oh, the last chance qualifier like, thing you mean, right? Yeah, yeah, right. last chance qual, yeah. And when like right. Shiro was crying, yeah. I was like shit. Because it was like it was either it was them and FaZe, it was like yeah. a pretty big team in yeah. the in there. And it was like, we're guaranteed that two out of the three of these big teams that are the last yes. six of this last chance qual are not making. I think Bait was another one, but they, obviously they're not a big team. But it was like yes. we're losing like some of these big teams here for the major, which is gonna obviously just hit the viewership in some way. Whereas like, you know, ITB are making it, you know, I love ITB, like no offense to them, but like the average fan doesn't give a shit about them. So yeah, no, I, if there was like a blend, I'd be super happy, but I'm sad that I think that the RMRs are just gonna be the same teams over and over again, basically. See more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.